let's be honest, it's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who save the world. Sure they do. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy, and I'm gonna recap the events of Ms. Marvel for you. So like maybe you didn't watch the whole show or you just need a refresher before some new Marvel movie. Don't worry, I'm gonna sum up this really fun show for you right now. I got your back. So the show takes place in the fall of 2025, two years after the Avengers defeated Thanos and brought back half the universe in Avengers Endgame. The show opens with a YouTube video made by a fan girl named Kamala Khan who recreated the final battle of Endgame with paper cutouts. And honestly, it's one of my favorite scenes in the MCU. We all know the story. The Avengers were trying to save the world, but if we're being honest here, they were losing. Kamala's video focuses on the moment that Carol Danvers, aka Captain Marvel, showed up to save the day. Now, she acknowledges that some people think that Carol abandoned Earth, but Kamala is a die-hard fan, and she hopes that Carol's going to show up at a new convention called AvengerCon. And then we meet the other members of Kamala's Pakistani-American family through this really cool tracking shot throughout her childhood home. There's her religious brother, Amir, her kindly father, Yusef, and her overbearing mother, Maniba. So Kamala goes to take her driver's test, and notice how she's even wearing aviators like Carol Danvers does, and then she fails the test immediately. <laughs> Kamala looks out toward the city on her way home and imagines the life of a superhero in Manhattan. Now at school, she doesn't fit in. The teacher mispronounces her name and her friend Bruno is disappointed that she failed the driver's test because that means that she can't drive them to Avengers Con. And then we meet Kamala's other best friend, a fellow Muslim named Nakia. And then she has an awkward encounter with a cool kid and social media star named Zoe. Thanks. It's actually my name in Arabic. See you later. Kamala is unfocused at school. She likes to doodle, her mind drifts, and she is obsessed with winning the Carol Danvers cosplay competition at AvengerCon. And then we get these pretty awesome partially animated sequences where we see inside of Kamala's mind as she imagines her cosplay. But the problem is that Kamala has to ask her very strict parents for permission to go to AvengerCon. And she's having trouble working up the nerve. Oh my God, what happened to you? Death, dying, I have become death and dying. <sighs> Dude, what's wrong? I was at a Halloween party last night. Brett, that's November. It was a really good Halloween party. Oh yeah, I saw you at that party. I also had a really good time, but today I feel great. I want to die. Ah, uh, it's terrible, man. I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, normally I would have felt rough today too, but last night I took Z-Biotics. They're the sponsor of this video. See, Z-Biotics is a pre-alcohol probiotic. That's actually the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. See, Z-Biotics got Guys, it really works. I have a regular subscription that brings it to my house every single month. So here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct in the gut. It's this byproduct and not dehydration that's to blame for your rough next day. Z-Biotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It's designed to work like your liver, but it's in your gut where you need it to work the most. So you take Z-Biotics before you start drinking, and of course, drink responsibly, get a good night's sleep, all that. And I'm not kidding. I love Z-Biotics. I have an ongoing monthly subscription, it is holy nectar in my household. I literally am going to make it through the holidays just by using Z-Biotics, especially with Thanksgiving and Christmas and everything coming up. Believe me, these little bottles are totally necessary to my life. I highly recommend you give Z-Biotics a try. You will not regret it. Go to zbiotics.com slash screen crush or scan the QR code on screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use the code screen crush at checkout. Now Z-Biotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you are unsatisfied for any reason, Reason, they're going to refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to zbiotics.com slash screen crush and use the code screen crush at checkout for 15% off. Thank you, Zbiotics, for sponsoring this video. So, Kamala asks her parents about AvengerCon and it does not go well. Captain Mark. Captain Marvelous the Fellow. Afterwards, she texts Bruno about it. And I want to shout out this excellent production design where their text messages are actually incorporated into the environments. This shows how important texting is to them as a communication tool, but also it continues expressing Kamala's daydreaming in physical reality. Kamala tries on her cosplay, but she's not quite comfortable because these tight clothes are not something her culture normally accepts. And this is going to come into play later. Now, her parents saw that Avengers Con means a lot to her and they love their daughter. We have decided to let you go. Really, really, really. <laughs> but the condition is that she has to wear this Hulk costume that her mom made for her and she has to go with her dad. <laughs> and then, God, this is hard to watch. And, and you can't come with me, not just like that because it is so humiliating. Kamala immediately feels terrible. I made this for you. You're not going to dress up like all those other girls in skimpy outfits. 
that is not you. So her mother is constantly trying to tell her who she is, that she's too short, that she should be more like this or that, while Kamala is trying to define her own identity. It's not really the brown girls from Jersey City who saved the world. And to cheer her up, Bruno, who by the way is a tech genius, unveils the new additions for her Captain Marvel cosplay. So then, they work out a plan for her to sneak out and go to AvengerCon. So your plan is... Take the bus. But then, to add the perfect accent to the costume, Kamala grabs a bangle that her grandmother sent her from India. And I should note that her mom did not want Kamala to have this bangle. That is jump. After a couple of mishaps, they make it to AvengerCon, and it is awesome and filled with really cool Easter eggs. As the cosplay contest is about to begin, Kamala spots cool girl Zoe in her own Carol cosplay, and she is like totally gatekeeping this. Why is she here? The costume's not even accurate. She doesn't even like the Avengers. On the stage, Kamala realizes that she forgot the light-up glove. She has to give the costume some of her own flair, so she puts on the bangle, covering her in this blue energy and briefly shifting her into what appears to be another dimension. And then she accidentally shoots solid light out of her hand, damaging the display and nearly killing Zoe until Kamala catches her with her new light powers. But then when she sneaks into her bedroom, her mother catches her. Do you want to be good or do you want to be some, you know, this cosmic head in the clouds person. Now in episode two, Kamala rocks up to school all self-confident now because she has superpowers until she bumps into the hot new kid in school, Kamran. I'm awkward, you're gorgeous. Wait, what? But then she discovers that Zoe is using the incident from the night before to gain social media followers. I'm gonna have a party on Friday, you know, to celebrate the fragility of life. I mean, also the half a million followers thing, but mostly the fragility of life. And Zoe also gives her a lame superhero name. Nightlight. Again, this is somebody else giving Kamala a name, trying to define who she is, while Kamala is still trying to define her own identity. So she and Bruno start to experiment with her powers, where she practices creating these stepping stones so she can travel through the air. And Bruno works out. So it looks like your power isn't coming from the bank. It's coming from within you. And during their montage, there's even a fun nod to the death of Black Widow in Endgame. Let me go. You have to let me go. <laughs> then Kamala and Nakia rush to the mosque for prayers, and Nakia points out that the women's section of the mosque is very neglected. They really gotta fix this place? Uh, no. You mean they gotta fix our section of this place? So Kamala tells her that she should run for the mosque board and actually help institute positive changes. Maybe we'll run to the mosque board and actually make some change around here. Kamala apologizes to her mother and gets permission to go with Bruno to a party at Zoe's. And then Kamala eyeballs her crush, Kamran. Excuse me. Yeah. Throw my shirt. Sorry. <laughs> and Bruno is like immediately jealous. So the cops bust up the party so Kamran gives them a ride where they bond over Bollywood and hip hop and then she gets his number. Notice this shot going out of focus and bringing all these hearts into frame. It's really top notch work. Love the camera work in this show. But the next day at school, Kamala has trouble controlling her light powers, a metaphor for how teenagers get pimples and other blemishes. And this leads to a very real touching conversation between her and Nakia about getting their periods and about what it's like being a young woman in their culture. My whole life, I either been too white for some people or too ethnic for others and it's been this very sucky in between like when i put this on i feel like me kamala blows off training with bruno to have a driving lesson with kamran and they bond a little bit more so as kamran and kamala get close bruno gets offered a free ride to caltech which would unfortunately take him away from kamala and then zoe is questioned by the department of damage control who are trying to track down the new hero nightlight agent steven and cleary work out that nightlight is middle eastern so they order their agents to search all the local mosques just be respectful the FBI is already surveilling them, you know that. Over a family dinner with her brother and his fiance Soha, they tell her about the family's history during the partition. Oh, what's the partition? Well, it's when India and Pakistan were formally split into two countries, and long story short, it was really sad, really messy, and a lot of families were pulled apart. And some estimates say that as many as two million people died. But her father tells a hopeful story about her grandmother was separated from her family, but something magical happened. She followed a trail of stars. And during this story, Kamala's bangle glows, and she sees a vision of a woman in front of a train. Later, her grandmother tells her, That bangle belonged to my mother, Aisha. And the next day, her mom says, That woman? Brought shame on our entire family. And then the community gets together for an Eid celebration. Nakia campaigns while Kamala hears all these rumors about her great-grandmother. My father called her a snake. 
She put a curse on everything she touched. But then a dumb kid almost dies and Kamala has to suit up as Nightlight using her powers to save him, but just barely. Then she becomes a social media sensation. Yo, it's Nightlight! She nearly drops the kid when the bangle glitches, showing her a vision of the woman in front of a train, and this kid just almost dies. Afterwards, Kamala is pursued by these damage control drones, which were actually confiscated from Stark Industries and Spider-Man No Way Home. She's rescued by Kamran, who is with the woman from her visions. I'd like you to be my mom. So episode three begins with a flashback to British occupied India in 1943, where several people find Kamala's bangle, and it's attached to a severed alien arm. Now notice this is a site that is related to the Ten Rings, the terrorist organization run by Wen Wu that we saw in Shang-Chi. So the bangle is probably connected to his rings in some way. They want to use the bangle to take them back to their home dimension, called the Light Dimension or the Noor Dimension, and this is where Kamala's great-grandmother was originally from. This group is called the Jin, or the Clandestines, and their leader is named Najma. She's Kamran's mother. They claim that Kamala's grandmother, Aisha, was lost during the partition. So at first, Kamala is happy to meet other people like her, who have abilities, and they want Kamala to use the bangle to send them home. It was Aisha's wish to bring us all home. And now you must finish what she started. Why do they need Kamala? Well, apparently they can't use the bangle themselves. It has to be somebody who is like part Jin and part human, like Kamala. Now she tells Bruno all of this and she's very excited to know where her powers come from and she's also trending. You're trending. So, Damage Control shows up to search the mosque, and Nakia stops their search. Fan out search the premises. Uh, not without our permission, you won't. You have no legal authority here. So, Nakia doesn't like Nightlight because she brings unwanted attention to the mosque, which makes Kamala doubt her newfound role as a hero, but then she drops the bomb that she is now officially a member of the mosque board. Yay, Nakia. Wait, did you just say you won? Maybe. And now it is the day of her brother's wedding and Maniba is hurt that her mom didn't show up. It's just typical. She wasn't at my wedding, why would she be at my son's wedding? And Kamala's all worried that she's doing more harm than good because her action made the federal government search the mosque. But then her imam tells her, Good. It's not a thing you are, Kamala. It is a thing you do. Then she opens up a present from Bruno who made her a superhero mask. So he figures out that maybe Kamala could help the exiled Jen return to their home dimension. Because remember, now she like really wants to do something good for others, but Bruno warns her, if you help them go home, some things might go boom. And later when Kamala is conflicted, she has a sweet heart to heart with her mom. Whatever mountain you're facing, you don't have to do it alone. Showing that Kamala's family really is her strength. So she tells Kamran that she can't help the Jen quite yet, and then it's Imran's wedding day. He has a sweet talk with his father, and man, the family stuff in this show like really gives it heart. You are brave, my son because you have chosen family. Now the wedding is adorable and then the party is banging. Everybody dances for the couple. It is so much fun. <laughs> But see, Najma and the other Jin don't like Kamala's answer, so they crash the party to attack Kamala and force her to help them get home. So Kamala empties out the party by hitting a fire alarm, and then she has to fight off the clandestines, set to music by the Jersey Prince himself, Bon Jovi. <laughs> Now during the fight, Kamala starts to really get the hang of her powers and she even gets a little help from Bruno. Kamran turns on his family to help Kamala, then damage control shows up and arrests all the djinn while Kamala barely gets away. And outside, Nakia finds out that Kamala is secretly Nightlight. This whole time it was you and you didn't say anything? And her family is angry at her that she pulled the fire alarm and ruined the wedding. And then Kamala's grandmother calls her up and tells her that she saw the same vision of a train that Kamala saw during the fight. So now Kamala and her mom are going to Pakistan. You have to come to Karachi. So Kamala and her mother arrive in Pakistan and are greeted by her cousins and her grandmother. Now we immediately see that her mom and grandmother have a strained relationship. Your skin is so dry. At her nani's house, she finds her grandmother's drawings of the partition and of her childhood home. This is my Emmy, Aisha, your great grandmother. And then her grandma casually tells her that she is a jinn. Of course. And then she tells her that the bangle saved her life as a child, creating the trail of stars that led her to her father and the last train out of the city. Oh, so that's why Kamala saw a vision of a train. Exactly. The bangle is trying to tell you something better. Kamala's cousins take her around the city of Karachi and she learns about the city and finds her way to the train station where her great grandmother disappeared. Then she's attacked by a guy in a red mask who says, I sensed the noor. And after a brief fight, he says, You're not a clandestine, but you have the bangle. 
How did you get it from Aisha? Now this is Kareem, a member of a secret group called the Red Daggers, and he takes Kamala to their hidden headquarters. There she sees that the Noor dimension actually coexists with our own, but it's hidden behind a veil. So back in episode one when Kamala put on the bangle and saw all that weird stuff, that was her briefly being able to perceive the Noor dimension. And by the way, Noor is actually the energy source of that dimension that also powers Kamala's powers. But then we get a major bombshell. If Kamala decides to open the door into the Noor dimension, then our world will be consumed by its energy until our entire dimension is destroyed. Meanwhile, at the damage control supermax prison, the Jin escape custody, but they leave Kamran behind. He made his choice. Oh, yes, to live with it. Same prison, by the way, that held the abomination in She-Hulk. Then Kamala's grandmother talks to her about how, even after 80 years, she is still searching for her own identity. Even at my age, I'm still trying to figure out who I am. And this also parallels Kamala's journey of trying to reconcile her identity as a Pakistani American, but also trying to find balance between the life of a hero and being a normal kid. But then her grandmother implies that the goal is not to figure this out, that the question is actually the joy of the journey. Watch the rush. Kareem introduces her to his friends, and you know, they kind of make puppy dog eyes at each other. While back at the house, Madiba and her mom finally have a real heart to heart. I was continuously being shunned by the neighbors because of my crazy mother. Maniba didn't like always hearing these wild stories about the bangle and the trail of stars. I didn't need your stories, mommy. I needed my mother. And then afterwards, Kamala and her mom have a nice moment together. The show is so sweet. It really is. The next day, the Red Daggers help Kamala learn about her powers and how she is able to shape Noor energy in our world. But then the Jinn burst in. There's a big fight that spills out into the marketplace. The chase scene is awesome. Very high budget Red Daggers versus Jinn. And then Najma stabs the bangle with a dagger, opening a rift in space time. And then Kamala finds herself at the train station during the partition. Time travel. Episode 5 opens with a newsreel about India gaining freedom from the British in 1947 and showing how Muslims were given their own state called Pakistan, leading to riots and mass migration, which we call the partition. And then we flash back to 1942 in the aftermath of the Jinn finding the bangle. They've been pursued by British forces and Aisha gets away with the bangle. Then she meets Hassan, who is an activist trying to earn Indian independence from Britain. Later, Hassan meets Aisha, gives her shelter on his farm, and the two of them start to fall in love. The years go by and Aisha gives birth to Kamala's grandmother, but the politics of of India interfere in their happy life. Na koi mujhse phool kharidne ko taiyar hai aur na hi koi meri biwi ko doodh bechne ko taiyar hai. Kyun? Hasan. Kyunki main Musliman hu. That's messed up. But then Najma and the other Jinn track down Aisha. Now it turns out that Aisha ran away from the others and she pretended she was dead. For why? Because she didn't want to go back to the Noor dimension. She wants to stay with her husband and daughter. So Aisha wants to run away where the Jinn can't find them. And this is also right at the beginning of the partition. Aisha gives her daughter the bangle and the family joins the migration north, hurrying to get to the last train out of the country. She tells Hassan about the bangle, that it's magic. And then at the train station, they are separated. Then Najma kills Aisha in cold blood and Hassan is separated from his daughter. Then Aisha utters the words that her husband always told her. What you seek? Seek you. These are the same words that are now inscribed on the bangle in the future. It says what you seek is seeking you. So this opens the rift in space time and Kamala appears back in 1947 when she meets her great grandmother who tells her to save her daughter. She passes on a photograph of her family, which is meaningful because remember Kamala's grandmother did not have a single photo of her mom. So then Kamala leads her grandmother to Hassan by creating a trail of stars with the bangle. So wait, that was Kamala all along? Yes, the scene is awesome, very powerful, and it shows how every generation works for the future of their people and how the next generations are our tomorrows. And those tomorrows define our current lives and our legacies. So Kamala was always worried about doing good or being good if she's doing the right thing. And here she sees that her powers can help her community and her family. So Kamala reappears in her own time and voluntarily cutting a rift in the veil, opening a pathway to the Nord dimension. Oops. <laughs> but wait a minute, that rift can also bring the Nord dimension into our world and destroy the whole universe. Exactly. But when the Jinn touch the rift, they they turn into cartoon skeletons and die. Oh no, not cartoon skeletons. And then Najma for some reason thinks, I can make it. As Kamala pleads, It's not gonna work, it's just gonna destroy everything. But then Kamala brings up her son saying, You have Kamran. And I should know, this is the worst scene in the show because after like a second, the villain just says, You're right. And then she closes the rift and then turns into a cartoon skeleton. <laughs> what the f but then the lamest moment in the show becomes one of the best when her mom shows up and sees who Kamala really is. You are that light girl? Our family is magical. 
And then Kamala gives Nani a photo of her mother so she can finally see what she looked like. So the next generation is helping to give the former generation identity and closure. It's really sweet. Afterwards, Kamala learns that her mom was also a rebellious spirit like her and all the mothers and daughters of the family finally reconcile. Perhaps this was the journey I was intended to take. One that would bring me back to you. But back in New Jersey, Kamran is on the run and he asks Bruno for help. But Damage Control tracks him down with their drones and attack Bruno's place. And then Kamran uses his own light powers and then Bruno's apartment explodes. Oh no, so he does? No, they survive and Bruno and Kamran are now on the run. Kamran is hurt, but he's okay. But he's having trouble controlling his powers. Now, back at Kamala's home, she apologizes to her family and tells them the truth. I am the light girl. And her family is so supportive. I mean, I for one, I'm so proud of you. Now Kia calls, tells her that Bruno is in trouble, but before Kamala leaves, her mother gives her a present. This feels a bit more like you. Hmm? Her earned super suit? Yes, and this one is not an imitation of Carol's. It is based on her own Pakistani heritage. So Bruno and Kamran go to Nakia at the mosque, and she says, no, 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 you can't go here. This is a mosque in America. We are always under surveillance. I'm gonna need to see everybody's I. Jeez, that was not our first rodeo, Miss Agent. So instead, they go to the school because they know it would be empty on a Saturday. So Damage Control storms the mosque, but they help Bruno and Kamran get away with these awesome disguises, and Kamala finds them just as Kamran starts to lose control of his powers. What are you guys wearing? What are you wearing? Then it's suddenly nighttime as they enter the school. Kareem tells Kamala to get Kamran to the docks at night so they can smuggle him out of the country. But then, damage control shows up at the school and hey look, Zoe's also there. The theater has good lighting. It's where I film my TikToks and I owe you. So Kamala has come up with a plan. Since DODC is already here, we obviously can't outrun them, so we distract and stall for as long as possible until we can get Kamran safe. Even Kamala's brother shows up to help. Mom sent me to watch out for you. Superheroes don't need chaperones. So they create these fun, elaborate, home alone-like traps to stall damage control. Agent Deaver is ready to storm the school, but Agent Cleary tells her not to storm a high school. Yes, and they're doing it in front of a high school. Evacuate now, Deaver. You hear me? But she ignores him and damage control goes in anyways. And then Zoe uses her social media influence to spread the word for people to come to the school and help. To all my loyal followers, tag this message and share stories. The kids set up barricades, create smoke, foam bombs. But then Kamran's powers threaten to surge out of control. Kamala's powers counteract his though and then help to keep him calm. But Kamran presses her for information about his mother and finally he works out the truth. My mother's dead, isn't she? Kamran lashes out against an agent. Kamala stops him and outside the whole community has turned out to the school because of Zoe's TikToks. Kamran bursts out, damage control, opens fire in front of a school and Kamala shows up to defend him, her school and her community. So Kamran's powers surge out of control and he can't stop creating solid light formations. But then inside this bubble, Kamala helps to calm him down. There is no normal, there's just us and what we do with what we've been given. Damage control surges into arrest Kamala, but she is protected by her community and their local police. Afterwards, Agent Deaver is fired for attacking the school and Kamala gets a quiet moment with her dad when he tells her the true meaning of her name. That's what Kamal means in Arabic. Wonder, marvel. So Kamala's superhero identity was forged by both her father and her mother. But you sure are and always have been our own little Miss Marvel. And we see that Kamran has made it successfully to the Red Daggers and Kamala is officially the guardian of Jersey City. And then one week later, Bruno tells Kamala that she's the only person in her family that has these Nor powers because there's something different about her. Like a mutation. So she's in the X-Men? Yep, she's a mutant like the X-Men. And afterwards, Kamala is in her room. The bangle starts to glow and then she disappears and suddenly Carol Danvers appears in her room. Oh no, no. And guys, that is our recap of Ms. Marvel. If there's anything I left out or if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.